Um, the next question is about fatigue. And we mm. know that that's a really common symptom um, with mm. people with PSC. Mm. Um, how can we manage fatigue or, 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 live, or, or live with the symptom? I think, it, I mean, I have a, a wife that has autoimmune disease. So in some mm. ways, I, you know, I, I know, I you know, experience it firsthand. I think it's incredibly difficult because I think it's unless you have it and or you see a loved one with it, it's sometimes very hard as perhaps a, even for doctors who don't have loved ones with autoimmune disease or see the impact of an individual with that. It's incredibly difficult. But I think the first thing is hopefully you have a relationship with your doctor who understands the impact of this on everyday life. You know, the ability that no amount of sleep is going to make it better. There are some days where you just have to take it very, very slow. I don't have any magic answers. I think you have to, from the outset, be honest if you're lucky to have a good occupational structure at work, be honest with your occupational health about your limitations. You need to perhaps look at the hours that you're working. And for some patients, I try and write supportive letters to try and alter their shift pattern mm. or the hours of work in accordance. I think you have to accept it's very variable and it can be day to day. And it is hard, you know, you're trying to communicate, you know, and there are some days when people's, what they can do and how they can function vary tremendously. I think it's about trying to develop a supportive thing with your clinician, your work, and more importantly, you know, your family, trying to begin for them to understand that there are some days where you do just need to lay around and it's going to be very difficult. I think what is important from our end is also making sure that we're not blaming PSC on the fatigue. As I said to you, patients do get other autoimmune diseases with PSC, thyroid dysfunction, anemia from colitis, for examples, you know, Addison's disease very rarely and other things. It's important that we also make sure there's not another organ or disease at play that is treatable, that could modify your fatigue. So I think it is important and often, you know, so I don't have any magic answers yet. Um, we're lucky that, you know, once again, sister diseases, other autoimmune diseases like PBC, which also suffer incredible fatigue as well. People like Professor Jones at Newcastle is trying to do a huge amount of understanding about how the brain changes in cholestasis and how we might be able to modify those things. But I, I think in all honesty, we're a long way, way yet from being able to modify that in a meaningful way. 